Hey, y'all, Gab here. So I got a little bit different of a project for you today. So as it turns out, cars aren't the only thing I'm interested in. I also like old electronics. I was cruising through the electronics section in the thrift store the other day. We have a local one here that's really good about having the old electronics and having a very good selection in the electronics area for people like me that like old stuff. And I noticed this hard case. Now, there are a lot of things that a hard case in the electronics section could be at this particular thrift store. It could have been a typewriter, but those go really quickly. It could have been a slide projector, but I don't really have a need for those. But I had a few other ideas. So, seeing as it's a hard case, it's already a really useful thing to have around. I already wanted it. But I figured I'd go ahead and look inside, see what it was, see if it, see if I wanted what was in it as well. Because if I don't, it's not worth paying the twenty dollars or whatever they want for whatever it is. So I opened it up, and I was greeted with something I've been looking for for a while—a VHS camcorder. The biggest reason I had for wanting this is I had a project in mind. Now, something about these camcorders is they usually have an AV output on the back. This one came with this little adapter here that just plugs into that plug. And now I have audio and visual video out. Now, that's cool and all. It's like, oh, I can plug it up to my tube TV and watch what I'm filming and point this at the TV, and it's a lot of fun. If you never did that as a kid, just point a camera at the TV that you're outputting toward You've just really missed out on on hours of entertainment that shouldn't be entertaining for more than six seconds. Which is basically what all entertainment is when you're a kid. So it came with that, and it came with a docking station, which I've already taken the cable out of. Um, so I've been doing a, I've already done a little bit of research on this, just a little bit of reverse engineering, see what everything is, so it takes on this plug, white is ground, red is 12 volt supply, and green is battery charging, because this can charge a battery in the camera, and it was a, it's a lead acid battery, so it requires something like 17 volts to charge to the 12 volt uh, range. Um, and this whole this whole camera operates off 12 volts. Then here, you have a, I don't remember the pinout right now, but you have a line in, you have a line out for both um, audio and video. And you have a ground, and you have a power detection. Because when you turn the camera on, when you press the power button here, it takes your 12 volt supply, it turns off the charger for the battery, so it turns off your 17 volt supply, and it turns on the 12 volt supply, so that now your battery isn't charging anymore, but your camera is on. So, the other thing that you can get, it's really useful here, is a USB capture card. Now, at this point, these are like $20. They're, you know, they're cheap. You can get them for as low as like $12 brand new, or you can spend like $70, $80 on them real easy. But this is just a cheap no-name from uh, Amazon. And I have, these will take an S-video and stereo input or a composite video input, which is what this outputs. And encode it for USB, and you send it over to your computer, and now you have whatever you plugged into this over USB. These are really great for playing game consoles with a lot of lag, a lot of video latency, um, or just splitting out what your game console is putting out and recording what you're playing on your game console. I'm hoping that it'll have the video quality that everyone associates with VHS. I know I'm not going to get any of the tracking issues, but I'm hoping it'll have that look to it. I'm hoping that all of the encoding and all of the sensors in there will work together to get that look. But this is going to be a fun project, and I'm real excited to get started on it.
So a little bit of an update on this. I am trying to make this as seamless of an install as possible. I don't want it to I want it to look like it's supposed to supposed to do what it's gonna be doing. And so what I did is the camera came with a charging brick and as I mentioned in the last video I already took that apart and pulled the cable off of it. I already had the headers and everything. So I chipped away at the strain relief on that cable and chipped away at the case for the um, for the capture card so that I can just set this in here and snap the case together like so and now I have the strain relief and the original cable coming straight out of the capture card. Obviously I'm going to have to do some filming here and figure out where I'm going to put a power input on this on this case. But this is a start toward my install where it's just going to be the only modification to the camera is not to the camera at all, but to the cable that plugs into it. So to make this even more amusing, like I said, I need a 12 volt supply for the camera. And I can have that 12 volt supply over the cable for the camera. But you don't get a 12 volt supply over USB. So I have a lot of power supplies that use the same plug. And you know this plug, you know this 12 volt plug because Everything you have that's 12 volt uses it. Your router probably uses it. You know, everything uses it. And I figure I'll just put one of those somewhere in this system. Well, I don't have enough space in the container to put a panel mount on. And I don't want to modify the camera. I want this to be able to work independently of whatever camera I have, even though it's always just going to be this one. So I found this backup camera that I've had sitting around for a while, and I figured I'll just cannibalize it because it has that same plug as an inline format. So I'll just use a camera and cannibalize that camera in order to make a camera that's of a lower quality and make this camera less useful. Alright, I've uh, gotten everything wired up, did a little bit of testing. As it turns out, I had my wire colors wrong for, um, for power. I know I said that the white was ground, but the white was battery charging and the green was ground, which only confused me for well, we're not going to talk about that, but I got it fixed and nothing died in the process other than, you know, my self-esteem. Um, got everything soldered together and wrapped up in tape because I, I know stuff's going to be packed up in here real well and I don't want any shorts. I'm a little bit worried that this is going to get too hot, so I might be back in here to take tape off, but I think it's going to be okay. And if it's not, with how this is all put together, I bought a second one of these capture cards so I could have a capture card. And as you can see here, it has a pin header. Uh, so it has a connector there, so I can just, if this board dies, I can put the other board from the other capture card in here and just not wrap it in tape that time and continue on my merry way. So I'm going to get this closed up and I'll be back in a little bit with film from the amazing um, 30 year old camera. All right, Deb here, and today I'm coming to you from Potato Vision. That's right, I got it working. It didn't give me any problems at all. In fact, most of my problems came from the software side of things. So I think this is recording. I hope it's recording. But more importantly, remember what I was talking about? That's right. I got it. Here we go. Wee. This is the most fun thing that you can do with a camera 
ever. Yeah, you can do this with your webcams, but, you know, it's just not as much fun. This is so much, why do I enjoy this so much? Hours of entertainment. Alright, I'm going to set you down for a moment because i got to set something up. So I know I've mentioned this before, but I do have a pretty uh, interesting setup for my video recording. You see, I don't have a real camera. I have my 30-year-old VHS camera, but I've been doing most of my filming with my 4-year-old smartphone. So this is, uh, this is what my setup looks like. i got a tripod and some rubber bands. And, um, that's, that's how I do it. Just rubber band my phone to the tripod and put it at an angle it's not supposed to be at. And kind of just hope for the best. Oh, best thing about this camera, I can fade out. I did find out that the microphone on the camera isn't working, uh, which might be... I mean, that might be the reason it was just tucked in a corner for sale, but it's probably because it's a VHS camera. So I'm having to record audio from my computer with a, uh, with a 15, 20-year-old lapel mic that I just happen to have. But I, I think that's something I can work with. Alright, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this project and maybe you'll see more from this camera uh, in the future.